You're listening to an extract of the Leader Podcast. You can find us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Lawrence Fox has caused a bit of a row with an interview with the Evening Standard in which he's broken with the consensus about encouraging Londoners to get the COVID vaccine. I think vaccine is like, um, it's the same as voting. So it's like, uh, you know, it's up to each private individual to decide what they wish to do in terms of a vaccine. So, and I think that should be a sovereign choice. You can read the interview online at standard.co.uk along with a video. And it was done by our City Hall editor, Ross Lydell. Ross, he said more about coronavirus, didn't he? Yes, I had the chance to interview Lawrence Fox at length yesterday face-to-face. He'd asked for a a face-to-face interview. So uh, I and my camerawoman and the photographer were there with their masks on. He chose not to wear his. Uh, He greeted us with elbow bumps and we sat hopefully far enough apart. And uh, one of the questions sort of midway through the interview was, you know, have you had COVID then, Lawrence? And he said, yes, I think I did have it uh, around Christmas time, although he said he had the symptoms, but it tested negative for it. However, and I then asked, what's your view on the vaccine? Will you agree to have the vaccine? Uh, Essentially, he wouldn't say whether he was going to have it or not, because he said people had a sovereign choice to decide whether or not to get vaccinated. Uh, Now, this obviously is quite controversial because it goes against the narrative uh, from public figures and authorities encouraging us to get the vaccine, not just for our own benefit, but for the benefit of others. And I pressed them on this and said, you know, don't you have an obligation as a Londoner to get it to prevent you transmitting infection to others? That's when he said, well, it depends really what we decide, whether we have any sort of personal obligation to others. So this is obviously quite an extreme view, but it may be a view that some others share, uh, and uh, we thought it particularly newsworthy uh, to cover in a, a measured way in today's paper. He also talked about some of the consequences of lockdown. He was claiming that there were thousands of cancer deaths are being caused by this uh, and being forgotten by what he called the Prosecco Zoom class. I mean, he's uh, he's definitely trying to provoke people in this election, isn't he? Yes, you know, the Prosecco Zoom class may um, sort of come as a bit of a sharp jab to uh, many of us listening to this podcast, perhaps, David. And uh, I don't mind a glass of fizz myself, I have to admit. But I can see what he means. He's basically saying that the middle classes, although he's obviously a very well-to-do chap himself, have basically gone along with the government's narrative, while those who try and make a living on a day-to-day basis and haven't been furloughed and need to put food in the mouths of others have had a very hard time and really need things reopening as soon as possible. In general, his point was that the most vulnerable people in the country have been vaccinated, so therefore, what are we waiting for? Uh, and he also seemed, he said that uh, people under 50 uh, with no underlying health conditions had not been at substantial risk of death from COVID. So these were his points. He said, basically, it's time now to get a shift on. Uh, And he was basically standing on a double platform trying to urge Boris to release us from lockdown quicker than schedule and also to really rail against what he called a sort of anti-woke agenda and the sort of curbs as he sees it on free speech. And of course, I mean, the Mayor of London has a lot of power, but the Mayor of London can't lift lockdown, can they? That's right. I put this to him. I said, you know, you're essentially misleading people because you're implying or suggesting to voters that by voting for you, uh, we can release London from lockdown. And he said, well, no, I accept that. He said, but the mayor, the position of mayor is one of immense power, lobbying power. And he said, basically, if he ended up in City Hall with more than a million votes to his name, that would be almost impossible for Boris to ignore. So... Yeah, he takes it on board. It's not within the mayor's powers, but he's probably correct in saying that if suddenly, you know, 60 odd percent of Londoners voted for him because they want lockdown ended ASAP, uh, that would be uh, quite an intervention on the, the whole narrative of the pandemic. Is Lawrence Fox, an independent candidate, really likely to be sitting in the mayor's office with a million votes, though? Is he going to beat the Labour powerhouse and the Conservative powerhouse and all the money that they have in these campaigns? Well, if you want a one-word answer, the answer is clearly no. Uh, There's probably no chance he will become mayor. Uh, One of the Financial Times' political correspondents last week uh, tweeted that if Lawrence Fox became mayor, he was prepared to eat a fox himself. So we'll hold uh, Jim Pickard to that. 
Although, you know, we have to go back to the start though and remember that the very first mayor of London was an independent and stood on his own little bandwagon, a certain Ken Livingstone who did rather well uh, as portraying himself as an outsider and a non-establishment figure. What uh, Lawrence Fox has to deal with here, obviously, is that he's up against a very strong mayor in Sadiq Khan, who the most recent polls this week showed that he had more than 50% support among Londoners. The reality could be that this uh, could make the election process and the election campaign a lot more interesting if he gets any sort of coverage. He's promised to go around town in his battle bus. He says he won't knock on doors because he wouldn't like something knocking on his own door, but he will be out and he will be visible. But really, as it stands just now, it's a two-horse race between Sadiq Khan and Sean Bailey, the the Tory who's uh, not doing as well as he might hope, but he's still well ahead of the rest of the pack. (laughs) 